Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I share for, from my forefathers with pure conscience without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of the tears that I may fill with joy, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lewis and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou store up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Paul talked there about he served God under the old covenant. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was converted. He's now serving God as a member of the Church of Christ. The two couldn't mix, so he had to leave one behind. He had to leave the, the law of Moses behind. And then he's pressing on unto the new covenant. And the word of God says we can't serve two masters. We either leave the old life behind or we get under difficulties. We get under confusion and bondage. But Paul makes a statement here in verse 7. Or in verse 6 he says, Wherefore? I put thee in remembrance that thou store up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Now some scholars think that Timothy was having a problem with a boldness to speak the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no real evidence for that. But Paul reminds him that the gift is already there. Paul reminds him that the gift that he received by the laying on of his hands is already there. And he says to stir it up, meaning in the original, like stirring up a fire, putting on more material to keep it burning. And sometimes we Think whenever we're saved that we have received it all, but that's only the beginning. Sometimes we think when we're baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, that's it all, but that's only the beginning. There's a stirring up of the gifts that lie within us. There's a stirring up of the gift that's received through the laying on of hands. The gift of the Holy Spirit is received many times by laying on of hands. The nine gifts of the Spirit are received many times by the laying on of hands. And Paul here is reminding them that you have received this gift. Store it up. Are we storing up what we have already got from the Lord? Because if we don't store up what we've already got, He's not going to trust us with more. You know the old saying, lose, use it or lose it. And we need to have a boldness in these days. And that spirit of boldness and all the other things that's mentioned here, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. In other words, fear is a spirit. We must always remember fear is a spirit. And every time fear would try to come upon us in any shape or form or come against us in any shape or form, we need to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. 
We need a binder and say, devil, I have been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Fear will have no part of me because it's not of God. Now I know the word of God says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and all them things, but the fear of God is a reverence. The fear of God is not a torment like the fear of the devil. He said God hasn't given us a spirit of fear but of power. Where do we get the spirit of power? If you keep your marker in there. And we'll go to the book of Romans. Chapter 8, reading from verse 11. Much of this has been sung about this morning. Book of Romans, chapter 8. We'll read from verse 11. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in the believer. Because before we came to faith in Christ, the Word of God says we were dead and trespasses and sons. We were walking about, but we were spiritually dead. But now that the Spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, that resurrection power dwells in the believers. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also, so not only are we resurrected, spiritually but the Holy Spirit is quickening our mortal bodies it's all in the book it shall also quicken your bodies mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwells in you that's why we need to keep stuck in the fire of God that's why we need to keep waiting on the Lord we need to have a life style of prayer talking to the Lord God because we're not going to come to know him and who he really is if we don't have that relationship with him. And he's dwelling on us and the fire of God has come on us and the gifts of God has come on us. But we need to keep stirring them up by waiting on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and walk and not faint. If we believe the Bible, we're believing truth. If we're believing the doctrine or the tradition of our forefathers, sometimes we're believing stuff that's not even in the book. And we're going to come to all that, but we'll not, not get through it all today, but another day. We will lift up the Word of God, and we will see what we can expect 
and what we can receive because the Spirit of the Lord is dwelling in us. Not because of what we can do, but because of what God has already done. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to love up the flesh, but if we love up the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spread to mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall love. So as we love and contact and relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and this word, we're going to love. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We can't be led of the Spirit of God if we're not spending time with God. We can't be led of the Spirit of God if we don't know the Word of God and some foreign voice whispers in our ear and we have no discernment. We don't know the truth of the Word of God. We can be deceived. But while we walk with the Lord, we keep developing that relationship we keep growing in the Lord. Every hindrance that comes along. The Bible tells us to try the spirits to see whether they be of God or not. And one of the ways to try the spirit is to know if it's lining up with the Word of God. Because if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it's not the Holy Spirit. I remember talking to a self-appointed woman that called herself a pastor. And she said to me, sometimes the Holy Spirit will lead me contrary to the Bible to see whether I'll obey him or not. I said, that's not the biggest load of rubbish you ever heard, but it's coming close. Because the Holy Spirit will not lead contrary to the Word of God. It just won't happen. There's unity in the Godhead. So that is number one. We need to read. We need to understand. We need to take it in what God is saying to us in His Word. And whenever the voices come, we'll know whether it's God or whether it's the enemy. So if we're led by the Spirit of God, we are the sons of God, sons and daughters of the holy, mighty God, because that's a plan that God has for us, that we will be led of a spirit, and his spirit will not lead us astray. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again. Now what does that mean? We're saved and we're walking with God. And the Word of God says, Whoever Jesus sets free is free in need. So at the point of salvation, we are free. But what we do at that point, are we going to live for God? Or are we going to let man persuade us some other direction? And it says that because we have we have had the bondage. Ye have not received the spirit of bondage again, making it clear there that we were brought out of bondage. We were brought out of darkness. We have been brought into the marvelous light of the Lord God, but we're not settling for another bondage. And that's important that we get hold of that. Because all you have to do is switch on your television any day, any night, and you'll get preachers preaching bondage. Send us a few pounds and God will do this. Send us some more and God will do something else. We don't make bargains with God. We totally surrender to God at salvation. And God saves us. We don't make bargains with God regarding anything. I've heard people down through the years and 
They've told me, oh, I promised God I would do this if he done that. Well, there's not a chance that he was going to do that because this was not in the word of God. We don't mark bargains with God. We take them at his word. And he said he'll not bring us into bondage again. So we steer clear of bondage. Because Jesus said, I've come to seek and to see of that which was lost. Now I know many people preach that, that Jesus come to seek and to save those that were lost, and thank God those are part of what was lost. But whenever we consider what was lost in the Garden of Eden, there was fellowship. There was freedom. There was provision. The Bible tells us that God come down and walked with Adam, in the cool of the evening. Whenever Adam and Eve fell and the devil penetrated mankind, there was a separation between God and his creation. And Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. And he come to open up that relationship. He come to open up that provision. He come to restore the peace and the joy. Before the devil put his filthy hands in God's creation. Second Corinthians five seventeen says, "If any man, talking about mankind, any man be in Christ, is a new creature." All things are passed away. Behold, everything has become new. We're back in relationship with the Creator. And we don't touch anything. Taste not, touch not, or smell anything of the devil. We want to protect our freedom from bondage. Bondage is bondage. It doesn't matter what you call it. We stand on the truth of the Word of God. We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Bondage brings fear. And if we don't want fear, we reject bondage. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We have been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. We are the children of the Most High God. And the Spirit himself, which is the Holy Spirit, beareth witness with our spirit that we are now the children of God. When we face the enemy head on, we have got a witness in our spirit that we are the child of the Most High God. We have been anointed with that yoke to stone anointing of the Holy Spirit because the Word of it says, because of the anointing, yokes are destroyed. And whenever we live in that life, waiting upon God and responding, to circumstances by the power and authority given to us, we can see the enemy drop back. We can see the enemy's plan destroyed. Just like going down into Belfast and two rows of criminals carrying some machine guns. And they're stopping and burning everything that comes down that road. And here we come along. A great friend of mine, he was a Roman Catholic. He panicked when he saw what was going on in Anderson's town. And I said, don't panic. Just keep this vehicle moving. He said, I always thought you were mad, now I know you're mad. 
When we passed through the middle, they stood with their submachine guns at their side, unable to move because of the anointing of the Spirit of God. We passed through unharmed, untouched, but God laid hold upon that man driving that way. And he never forgot that. Another day I'm working just off the shack call. Got a call to go to another site and went down the Camberai Estate right onto the shack call. And just as I was coming up to the lights, it changed. And I heard the voice of God saying, Drive on. So I drove on. Felt the back of the van just lift up and down again. And later on, when I come back, the whole corner was gone. That's the freedom that God wants us to bring us into. We don't argue with the voice of God. Too often we argue with the voice of God. God says, do this, and we say, why? And we want a whole discussion over it. If I had stopped at that traffic light and argued or questioned God at all, I would have been blew up with the rest. So we got to come to that place where we just, if God speaks, we don't question it because he's on the throne and he knows everything. We're so quick to question. Just to bring it down to a natural level, I start watching a woman one day and she was using a microwave and she wasn't familiar with a microwave. So she put the food in and she closed the door and she punched on some fingers. And I could see her, she went over and she had one hand to open the door and the microwave still going. And the other hand up to reach in. And I said, don't you put your hand in there. What did she do? Open the door, on goes the hand, and says, why? <laughs> you know, that's how we do with God sometimes. We don't know why God tells us to do particular things, but it'll work out. Because we've been delivered from bondage. And Audrey could tell this story better than I can, but the time we Robert broke his leg, Audrey could tell you the whole thing, I just want to tell you one wee part of it. But Audrey rung me and said, we're up at Musgrave. There's a real miracle around getting them there. She said, we're up at, Mike, uh, up at Musgrave. But Robert so feared, fears just gripped him. They can't get the cast off. He had a half body cast. I said to Elmer, I'm going to Musgrave, I'm not putting up this nonsense, that devil anymore. So I get on the car and heading out that wee road there to the main road. I would normally turn left and go by the M2. But just going by that bungalow, I heard the voice of God saying, go by the M1. I hadn't time to argue, I wouldn't want to argue anyway. But he said, go to them one, so I went to them one. I don't think he even ever used my wipers that day. But we went down there and we bound that fear that was gripping Robert. And before I left, Eleanor said to me, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going down to bring Audrey and Robert home. She said, she can't do that. They've got to get the cast off. I said, I'm bringing them home, and the cast will be off. So I got out there, I said, turn right. I went right, and went up through Stewartstown, or in that direction down, on the M1 down to Musgrave. Prayed with Robert. The cast was cut off. Bring them both home. So I got home, and Elder says, boy, that was one bad day. She said the rain and the thunder and lightning, we never seen the like of it. I seen nothing. 
put on the news the whole of Belfast was blocked up because the West Link was all flooded. So that's why we don't argue with the voice of God. Because the devil's out trying to bring us into bondage. Jesus said the devil has one occupation. To steal, kill, and destroy. But he said, I have come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. So we don't question the word of God. If he says turn right, we turn right. If he says turn left, we turn left. When I hear some people talking about the trouble of God until, and that much of we hear a voice telling us not to go that way. I remember a close relation of mine asked me to go with him somewhere. I don't know where we went or what we were doing, but he asked me to go somewhere with him. And one of those older, what do you call them things, tells you the road to go. Satnav. What? Satnav. Satnav. Is a Satnav one. It's a woman's voice. And she says, turn left. He says, I'm not going that road. <laughs> so he goes on. Then she says something up, and oh, I'm not doing that. I don't know what he had the thing switched on for. I know I felt like ripping it out and throwing it out the window. Because they argued the whole road. So what was the point of having the sat now? So when God speaks to us, we need to listen. Because we don't know what the devil is down the road. Remember Elisha whenever the king of Israel was having a lot of problems with the enemy. And Elisha would go to the king and say, don't go down that road because there's an ambush down there. Another time we tell him to see him. The king didn't really believe him. He sent people to find out. Yes, the ambush was there. So we don't need to walk into ambushes. We can listen to the voice of God that knows everything. And we have that spirit that we can cry, Abba, Father. We have that relationship through Jesus Christ and the Father. We have that power which he sent to lead us, to guide us, and to teach us. So we press on. We cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself Breath witness with our spirit that we are now the children of God. And up children then heirs, and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that ye suffer with him, that ye may also glorify together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Don't worry about the tribulation. Or persecution. Keep our eyes fixed on the Lord. Because the word of God says all the desire. To love godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. We stand for the word of God. And if ever there was a time when we need to stand for the word of God it's today. Because there's so much nonsense going on. And there's so much of God's people have been brought under bondage again. And they're not hearing the voice of God. They're not being led of the Spirit of God. The devil's up to all the rascality. Want to steal, kill, and destroy. But we have got a relationship that we thank God for. And we stand in the word of God. 
There's so much we can say about the provision of Calvary that has been let go, preached against, and people are being brought into another bondage. We're in a situation where the one world order has been able to penetrate ground that he shouldn't be allowed to penetrate while the church of Christ is on earth. And this is only more or less an introduction to what I want to say. It will have to do another day. But we need to rise up and be bold. We need to rise up with the power and authority of our God. Because there's so much going on. I listened to an interview with a democratic politician in America. Hillary Clinton, I'm sure everybody up here tell of her. She said, we must take on the church. We must destroy the church because the church is judgmental. The church is standing against same-sex marriage. The church is standing against abortion. We must take them on and we must destroy them. And there's people yet know Hit it up. Why you hit it up? Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And that includes the Democratic Party. That includes Hillary Clinton. That includes every demon-possessed politician, even in our own land. Yet the church is asleep. That woman can cross from America into Northern Ireland and get a high position and a big pay packet from Queen's University. Time to stand up and take a devil on. I ball the devil and say, I am redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Let's bow our heads. Time's gone, but we'll take us up another day. Because there's so much we need to refresh and stir up the fire of God within us. Stir up the gifts that are lying within us. Use them or lose them. Father God, we praise you for the power that's in the name of Jesus. I praise you, Lord, for the power that you've invested in your church. I praise you, Lord, no weapon formed against us can prosper. And I praise you, Lord, no plague shall come nigh our dwelling. I praise you, Lord, what we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And what we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The Father God, I pray, cause us to rise up and to begin to do exploits in the name of Jesus. Lord, that we will take on that great commission that you have given us. Go unto all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In your name we will speak with new tongues. In your name we will cast out devils. In your name we'll see the sick raised up. We'll see our families delivered and set free. Everything that's coming against it, we bind it in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that we will leave this house today, Lord, with a fire burning on us, Lord, that will never be the same again. And Father, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and give you all the glory. For you and you alone, Lord, are worthy to be praised. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. And shout it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Oh, there's power in Jesus' name.